Math 31, welcome to section 6.7 where we're going to look at exponential and logarithmic models. So we're going to take all of the properties of exponential functions and logarithmic functions and apply them to growth and decay situations. And you might be thinking, well, didn't we already look at a little bit of exponential growth and decay in section 6.1? And the answer is yes, we absolutely did. I know it's been a few sections, but we did look at this type of exponential growth where we had our initial value and then our base to a raised to a certain power. And our base could be any number back in section 6.1. And we're going to rework some of these exponential growth type problems looking at an exponential model with base e. Because really, in any of these problems I'm about to do, as long as it's exponential growth or decay, your base can be any number. It's just how you manipulate um, the, the numbers that are given to you. So where in 6.1 we were using base B, which could be any number, I'm going to specifically target base A in this section. And I'll show you how they relate in example two. I'm going to do example two with base E and with base B, so hopefully you can see some connections there. But in terms of an exponential growth or decay function, we'll let A sub zero be the amount or number present at time t equals zero, so our initial amount. Then under certain conditions, the amount present at any time t is modeled by y equaling a sub zero e to the kt, where k is a constant. And so there's a lot of letters in here, and I want to focus on how many variables or how many constants you need to solve for before you get going. So let's make sure we're all clear. e is not a variable. e is a number. So this base e, right, don't forget e is about 2.1728, and it keeps on repeating. So this is not a number. All right, a sub zero, also not a number, it's a constant, it's the initial amount. All right, and you'll find that somewhere in the wording of the problem, hopefully. Your problems are always easier when they give you the initial amount. And k will also be a constant. So k, e, and a sub zero, not variables. These are all constants. So your only two variables are t and y. Okay, t being your independent variable, y being your dependent variable. So when you go through these types of problems, you need at minimum, since you have two variables, you'll need two ordered pairs to get through this problem. And hopefully, like I said, one of the ordered pairs just gives you your initial value and then that makes your life a little bit easier. But if it doesn't, we've got workarounds for that as well. All right, so with all that being said, let's go through example one. So let me scooch my paper up so that we can get example one in view. All right, now I wanna mention in ex for example one, I will redo this problem when we get to the next section using exponential regression on our calculator. And when we use exponential regression on our calculator, the, the problem's gonna go a lot faster, but again, I wanna stress that if we do this on our calculator, I will not have base E. So when I do it by hand, I'm gonna make it so that I have base E in my exponential expression. When we do it on our calculator, we're gonna have base B, a la section 6.1. All right, so as I read through example one, let's try and be on the listen for what was the variable in this problem. So data from recent past years indicate that the future amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere may grow according to the table. Amounts are given in parts per million. Find an exponential function that gives the amount of carbon dioxide y in year x. Let the year 1990 correspond to x equaling zero. Estimate when future levels of carbon dioxide will triple the pre-industrial level of 288 parts, 280 parts per million. So we're looking at CO2 being in the air, and I'm sure you've heard about climate change and how dangerous all these carbon emissions can be. And, and as you see, in 1990, we had some data. In 2000, we had some data. And now they're predicting into the future, all right, in terms of what they believe the carbon dioxide level will be in 2075, 2175, and 2275. I mean, you can see here, these years haven't happened, at least as of this recording. And I would be shocked if I was alive in the year 2075. So probably if you're hearing this video, this, this year hasn't happened yet. All right, but I was given a base year. So when I'm given a base year, I like to convert all of my years to that, that base year because it just helps me figure out what my x values are. So if this is year zero, this is going to be year 10 because 2000 is 10 years after 1990. And for the rest, I'm actually just gonna go right to my calculator. So if I take a look, let me clear all of this out. I'll do 2075 minus my base year. So this was 85 years 
after 1990. I can see the pattern at this point, but if you can't, no problem. Just keep subtracting your base year. So this will be 185, and then since this is 100 years later, it's going to be 285. But again, if you didn't see that pattern, you're more than um, welcome to just do it this way, right? Always your current year minus your base year, and that will tell you what your T value is. All right. So the first thing it says is find an exponential function. It doesn't say find a linear function, doesn't say find a quadratic function, it specifically says exponential function. All right, so I know that if I want an exponential function, I'm gonna be looking at a naught e to the kt. And just so um, I point this out, this is just a different version of p e to the rt, right? So we, when we were doing those financial questions, we had p e to the rt, well, instead of P, we're calling it A sub zero. Instead of R, we're calling it K, but it is the same function. And this is always the case for exponential growth or decay. All right, so I have two variables. I have a T and a Y, so I really need to get two, um, I need to get, I should say I have two constants I need to solve for it. Let me, let me back that up. I have a K and an A sub zero, so I'm gonna need two ordered pairs to make that work. So let me go with my, I always want to go with my y-intercept, so I've got 0, and then I've got 353, and then what do we have, 10, and 375. So the awesome thing about this being your 0 is there is my a naught value. So I can see my initial value from the data that was given to me. So at this point, that implies just from here that a sub 0 is equal to 353. I initially started with 353 parts per million of carbon dioxide, right? My two variables, years, carbon dioxide. All right, so now I can say this. I can say y is equal to 353 e to the kt. And since I'm down to just one constant to solve for, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my other ordered pair. Now, if I plug in this ordered pair, this is a t value, this is a y value, so I'm gonna plug 10 in for T, and I'm gonna plug 375 in for Y, and then the only thing that I won't know is K, and I can solve for that constant. And I'm gonna need a little space to do this, so I'm gonna move this up. All right, so let's plug this in. So I am gonna have 375 is equal to 353 e to the KT, so e to the 10 K, basically, because my exponent would be k times 10, so I'm just gonna write that as 10k. All right, if I wanna solve this, the first thing I wanna do is isolate the exponential term. So if I wanna isolate the exponential term, I'm gonna to need to divide both sides by 353. So I'm gonna say e to the 10k is going to be equal to 375 over 353. All right, now I can crunch that number in my calculator. That's no problem, so let's take a look. So we've got 375 divided by 353. I'm looking at about, I'll go 1.602. Uh, as soon as you start rounding on your calculator, you, you will severely or potentially severely alter your end answer. So if you wanna be super precise, just leave this expression as is and crunch the number at the bitter end. All right, and when we, we start doing this problem, in the next section, when we use exponential regression, you don't have to worry about that. And I'm not going to be a super stickler for, for when you round. I, ju I just want you to hear it. Like, I'm going to round to 1.602, so that will alter my end answer. If you rounded to 1.06, you would have potentially a very different answer than I would at the end. So where you round and when you round does affect your answers with these exponential problems because things can grow so quickly with exponential growth. All right, so I've got 1.602. I don't think I had 602, excuse me, I said that wrong, 1.062, there we go. All right, now let me move this up just a little bit more because we got plenty to do still here. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna log both sides. So I'm gonna log both sides because again, I have an exponential function and if I want that exponent, that's what a logarithm is. I could log with any base. I'm gonna opt to log with the natural log because I have a base E here. So ln of e to the 10k has to be equal to ln of 1.062. And then these cancel. So I'm gonna get 10k is equal to ln of 1.062. And again, this is just a number, 
All right, and I will crunch it on my calculator. And ultimately, if I want to solve for k, k will be equal to ln of 1.062 divided by 10. Okay, now I'm going to crunch that number on my calculator. And since I have the 1.062 left in there from before, I'm going to make sure I float all of these decimals. So I'm going to take the natural log of that answer, all right, which means my calculator will keep all nine, well, how many decimals is this? Yeah, all nine of these decimals. And if you don't remember how to get your answer function, your answer function lives over your negative symbol, but it's in, it's in blue, so you have to hit the second key first. Now I'm going to divide that by 10, and let's see what we have, 0 0.006. Okay. All right, so I have 0 0.006. All right, fantastic. So thinking about where I've come from, instead of saying y equaling e353 e to the kt, I now know y is equal to 353 e to the 0 0.006 t. I have my model. All right, and that was the first part of the question, right? It said find an exponential function that gives the amount of carbon dioxide y in year x. Here it is keeping in mind that I, I used T here. I guess if I wanna be super technical, and I, I should, they told me to use X, so let me go ahead and use X here. All right, so I've got the letters they gave me in my problem. We're feeling good. Now let's do this. It says, estimate when future levels of carbon dioxide will triple from the pre-industrial level of 280 parts per million. All right, if we wanna triple from there, triple means multiply by three. So let's take 280 and multiply it by three. We are looking at 840. So if I wanna triple that pre-industrial level, I'm asking when do we think carbon dioxide is gonna hit around 840 parts per million? And let me just get some gut feels here. I see 840 is trapped between 590 and 1090, but it's closer to 1090. So basically, I think my answer, I know my answer is somewhere between 2075 and 2175, but I think it's going to be closer to 2175. So if I had to guess, I would say it would be, let's see, we're more than halfway. So I would say it would be at least 2125, maybe like 2130, 2140, somewhere in there. But let's go find out. So here's the second part of the problem. All right, so they're asking, when is my y value going to hit 840? So let's set y, oops, let's set y equal to 840 and see what happens. Okay, so again, if I'm gonna roll through this, I wanna make sure that I isolate my exponential term. Let me divide both sides by 353. Okay, so as I do that, let's do 840 divided by 353. So I'm looking at about 2.7, oh, not 2.7, excuse me, 2.380, because if I wanted to go three decimal places, I would round up here. So I have that e to the 0.006x is equal to 2.380. Again, because my variable is up in the exponent of this power, I'm going to log both sides, and I'm going to opt to do the natural log because the base of my power is e. So we'll go 006x would be equal to the natural log of 2.830. We know natural logs and exponentials, they are going to cancel, or I should say exponentials of base e. So I get 0 0.006, oops. Actually, let me head up here. So I'm gonna get 0.006x being equal to whatever the natural log of 2.830 is, and I'm gonna divide both sides by 0 0.006. And so whatever this number is equal to, and I'll crunch it in my calculator in a little bit, that is ultimately my answer. So let's go find out what that is. So I need to do the natural log of this number divided by 0 0.006, and we're getting about 144 point, I'll just say 144.49 here. Now, this doesn't represent the year 
144, right? And that wouldn't make sense because I we didn't have that much CO2 in the uh, year 144. Don't forget that your base year was 1990. So the year in question is your base year plus the number of years that have passed. So let me add 1990 to this. And there we go. So we think the year is around 2134. All right, so I think that carbon dioxide levels will triple the pre-industrial level of 280 parts per million somewhere around the year. Oops, you can't quite see that. Excuse me, let me move that up one last time. There we go. Somewhere around the year 2134. All right, so again, for this problem, we did this, I don't wanna say by hand, because I definitely use my calculator to crunch all of these natural log problems, or natural log expressions, but I do want you to notice that we had a base E here, because when we get into section 6.8, I'm going to use exponential regression, and we won't have base E anymore. So it's just a different way of doing the same problem, but then in 6.8, I'm doing all of it on my calculator. All right, so with that, let's flip to the next page, and we'll keep working this a sub zero e to the kt equation. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.